magandang araw po sa inyo. Welcome po sa isa na namang episode ng online series ng Inang Pamantasan kung saan ang pagkatuto ay walang hangganan. Ito ang PNU Talks. Ako pala si Dr. Wilhelmina Obanyana Arroyo, ang inyong learning from home body sa episode na ito ng liyong araw entitled High Risk People in Times of Pandemic Crisis. I-comment ang inyong katanungan at kuro-kuro tungkol sa ating episode ngayong araw. Huwag kalimutang i-like, i-share ang episode natin. High Risk People in Times of Pandemic Crisis Certain people are at risk for a serious infection if they catch COVID-19, the disease caused by new coronavirus, including those over age 80, people with heart disease, lung disease, and diabetes. COVID-19 pandemic has created a public health emergency across the globe, with medical professionals and scientists racing not only to treat people but also uncover more information on the virus, searching for possible cure, medication, vaccines as well. It has become clear that nobody is immune to the virus. However, some groups carry a bigger risk of infection and even increased chance of dying from COVID-19. We all know that COVID-19 is defined as illness caused by the corona, novel coronavirus, which was first identified in Wuhan, China. While on March 11, 2020, the World Health Organization declared COVID-19 a global pandemic. Presentation of COVID-19 has ranged from asymptomatic, mild symptoms to severe illness and mortality. Common symptoms have include fever, cough, shortness of breath, sore throat. Symptoms may develop two days or two weeks following exposure to the virus. Today, we will discuss COVID-19 in patients who have underlying diseases that has been identified to have a higher risk of developing complication, which is acute respiratory distress syndrome, which is a common complication of COVID-19 and is the leading cause of mortality. Hence, I will divide my talks into three parts. COVID-19 among patients with asthma, hypertension, and diabetes. During this public health crisis, it is important to identify those vulnerable groups to better protect them from the disease. While COVID-19 causes only mild symptoms in most infect, uh, infected patients, these pre-existing medical conditions are, are faced with threats of developing severe complications. COVID among patients with asthma. Chronic airway and lung diseases such as chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, asthma, pulmonary fibrosis, interstitial lung disease can set the stage for a more severe infection with the COVID-19 because of scarring, inflammation, and lung damage. Asthma is a chronic lung condition that affects the airway and causes inflammation. This inflammation causes spasm, narrowing of airways, which leads to wheezing, breathlessness, and coughing. People with moderate to severe asthma may be at higher risk of getting very sick from COVID-19. COVID-19 affects our respiratory tract, the nose, the throat, and lungs can trigger asthma attack and possibly lead to pneumonia and ARDS. The most important thing you can do right now is to keep your asthma under control by continuing your current medications, including inhalers. Do not change your asthma medication without talking to your doctor. Avoid asthma triggers such as smoke, dust, fragrances, pets, 
air pollution. Strong emotions due to stress can trigger asthma attack. Take steps to help cope with the stress and anxiety. Cope stress by taking breaks from listening news and social media repeatedly about the pandemic can be upsetting. Make time to unwind. Try to do activities that you enjoy. Take care of your body. Stretch. Meditate. Eat healthy, well-balanced diet. Get plenty of sleep. And talk with people you trust about your concern. There is no vaccine for COVID-19, so make sure to get your flu shot if you haven't had one. It is not too late to protect yourself from flu. COVID-19 can be particularly troubling for those with asthma. It is important for asthma sufferers to know that they are not at higher risk for contracting coronavirus. However, People with asthma need to be specially diligent in protecting themselves from the virus through means such as washing your hand and staying away from those who look ill. Asthma patients who are taking inhaled or oral corticosteroid should continue taking their medicine to reduce airway inflammation and minimize the risk of exacerbation or what we call as asthma attack. Corticosteroids drug can slow your immune system, but benefits outweigh the risk for people who have asthma. Using nebulizers to treat conditions such as asthma is very valuable. But if you have COVID-19, nebulizer a rosalized droplet from the airways which are then spread into the air. This allow by the virus to be transmitted by the nebulizer. When using nebulizer, no one else should be in the room. Rescue drug like inhaler bronchodilators do not affect the immune system. If you have asthma flare and need to use medicine, the inhaler is the best. Keeping asthma well controlled is vital in achieving a good outcome after developing COVID-19. Hypertension and COVID-19 Although COVID-19 is mo most often affects airway and lungs, this organ works together to drive oxygen to the body's tissue. When lungs are overtaxed due to the illness, the heart has to work harder, which creates challenges for people who are already living with heart disease. American Heart Association notes that viral illness like COVID-19 can raise the risk of heart attack in people with build-up plaques in their blood vessel. High blood pressure damages the arteries and reduces blood flow to the heart. That means your heart has to work harder to pump enough blood over time. This extra work can weaken your heart to the to the point that it can pump uh, that it can't pump as much oxygen rich blood to the body. If you have high blood pressure, it is good idea to take extra care to protect yourself during this time of pandemic. Data from China and Italy, countries hit early by the virus, shows higher risk of COVID infection and complication in people with high blood pressure. Long-term health condition and aging weaken your immune system, so it's, it's less able to fight off the virus. Nearly two-thirds of people over 60 have high blood pressure. COVID-19 can also damage the heart directly, which can be spe specifically risky if your heart is already weakened by the effect of the high blood pressure. Muscle co the virus can cause inflammation of the heart, heart's muscle called myocarditis, which make it harder for the heart to pump. 
patient with high blood pressure need to be extra careful. The CDC offers this advice. Make sure you have enough maintenance medicine on hand to treat the high blood pressure. Stay at home and limit contact with other people. Avoid crowded area or anyone who looks sick. Wash hands often with soap and water. Clean and disinfect all frequently touched surfaces. Coronavirus isn't virus vaccine isn't available yet, but American College of Cardiology recommends that you stay up to date to other vaccines, like the pneumococcal vaccine, which will prevent you from catching up pneumonia on top of coronavirus to get flu and also get your flu vaccine. It is vital for patients with hypertension about keeping their blood pressure control and maintaining good health and hygiene. Some over-the-counter drugs can be BP racers. Common pain relievers called the NSAIDs, they are the ibuprofen and the naproxen, can increase blood pressures. Blood pressure. Decongestant are also known as BP racer. People with heart condition should limit or avoid them, especially if their blood pressure is uncontrolled. Alcohol and caffeine should also be avoided. I always tell my patient that despite the lockdown, they should continue to take their blood pressure medicines. Commonly used BB medicine do not heighten the susceptibility to COVID-19 infection. The ACE inhibitors like the Ramipril and Lysinopril, the ARBs like the Losartans. There were previous press reports about this medicine. This is especially important given that ECQ, life itself appears causing high blood pressure from stress, less exercise, and eating differently during this time of pandemic. Diabetes and COVID-19 People living with diabetes have increased risk of getting sick from COVID-19, especially for those who have poorly controlled blood sugar. Diabetes increases inflammation and weakens the immune system, making it harder for people to fight off disease in general. They should adhere to their medication regimen and do everything possible to keep their blood pressure up, their blood sugar under control. Multicenter studies of patients hospitalized with COVID-19 reaffirm strongly the link between COVID-19 outcomes and the glucose control. Among patients with pre-existing type 2 diabetes, who have better glycemic control experience significant reduction in adverse outcome. They also required lower use of antivirals, antibiotic, and systemic corticosteroid. Considering that patients with diabetes have much higher risk for death and various complications, controlling blood glucose well may act as auxiliary approach in improving the prognosis of patients with COVID-19 and diabetes. Unfortunately, patients with uncontrolled diabetes more likely to die as compared with those without diabetes because they are more likely to develop acute respiratory distress syndrome, acute kidney injury, and septic shock. Living with diabetes has its challenges, and the COVID-19 pandemic can cause worry and, and stress. It is important to know that diabetes does not increase your risk of contracting COVID-19. Hence, minimize your risk of contracting COVID-19 by following the CDC guideline. Wash your hands for at least 20 seconds, avoid touching your face, Clean surfaces regularly and stay at home. Keeping your blood sugar level in range is important. As high blood sugar suppress your immune system. Check your blood sugar level frequently. 
be sure to stock up your supplies man for managing your diabetes. Continue taking your maintenance medicine or if you are in insulin, continue the dose as instructed. Blood sugar strips and other essential medical supplies, especially now that we are on quarantine. Finally, no vaccine is currently available against COVID-19. Avoidance is the principal me method of deterrence. The best way to protect this vulnerable group is to avoid any chance of being exposed to COVID-19. Every day, protective action can go a long way in averting the spread of COVID-19. The cure for COVID-19 has not has yet to be discovered. So maintaining a healthy lifestyle to keep up the body's natural disease fighting capabilities is their first line of defense. During this time of pandemic, whatever religion we belong, let us remember that prayer is the best medicine and our God is the best doctor. Again, ako po si Dr. Wilhelmina Arroyo. Ito ang PNU Talks.